This is going to be a study on the subject of death. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So as a general rule, everybody is going to die. But let's look at where did death start. Death started in a garden. God said this to Adam in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. As you know, Adam and Eve bo both ate off the tree. They both died, and they both died that day spiritually. If they would have obeyed God, they would still be alive in the garden. Although they didn't die that day physically, in God's eyes, they did. Because a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And this sin that Adam and Eve committed caused every man to be born with a sin nature. Everyone is now born in the image of Adam when he's born physically and not in the image of God. And until you get born again, you are still in Adam. 1 Corinthians 15.22 says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Everyone who dies in their sins will not only face a physical death, but also a second death. James 1.15 says, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You will die physically, and then one day you will face a second death in a lake of fire. Revelation 21.8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Next we will go into, How does God look at death? Ezekiel 33.11 says, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? So right there God says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And so when a lost person dies in their sin, God doesn't get pleasure out of it. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everyone to be saved and come to repentance. He doesn't want anyone to die in their sin and burn in hell forever. And on the other hand, when a saved person dies, this is how the Lord feels in Psalms 116. In verse 15, it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. It is precious to God when a saint passes on. At this time, the saint will no longer face sin and sorrow and pain. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, he's not going to have to face this world anymore. And next we will look at how sure is death. Life is short and death is sure. Death comes suddenly. And we will see from the Bible, not only is it sure, but it comes quickly. Proverbs 27, 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The person listening to this right now could die tomorrow. You know people that are in good health that could die tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen the next day. That's why you need to make sure you're saved. And stay living right. You don't want to die in sin. If you're saved, you're always saved. But you don't want to die living a sinful lifestyle and then get to the great or the judgment seat of Christ and not have any rewards because you live for self and not for Jesus Christ. James four fourteen says, Whereas you know what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. So, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, you don't know what's going to take place tomorrow. Your life is a vapor. It's not going to last long. 
Compared to eternity, your life is like spraying a vapor out of a bottle. It only appears for a moment, and you don't know how much time you have left. It would be foolish to take time and care about this present life and not care about the eternal life. And Job 7.7 7 says, Oh, remember that my life is wind. Mine eyes shall, see no more, shall no more see good. Your life will pass away as quick as the wind blows by. And the Bible over and over again talks about your life being like a shadow. Psalms 144.4 says, Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Psalms 102.11, My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. First Chronicles 29.15, For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as we're all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow. And there is none abiding. Job 8, 9, For we are but of yesterday and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Ecclesiastes six twelve, For who knoweth what is good for men in this life? All the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? God over and over again is letting us know that our life is short. It's like a shadow that passes away. If he says it that many times... He must be wanting to get something across to us. Our life is short. Second Samuel fourteen fourteen. For we must needs die and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. That's how your life is. The next time that you spill milk or water on the ground, remember that is your life. You grow through this life and live 70 years, and all those years that are past cannot be brought back. Do today what you'll wish you'd you're done when it's 20 years from now. You're going to be 70 years old, 60 years old, 50 years old. You're going to look back and say, I wish I had done this or I wish I had done that. And one day you will wake up an old person wishing you had served the Lord. If you talk to older people that are like 70, 80, they'll say they don't know where all those years have gone. And they can never get any of those years back. As the verse said, for we must needs die, and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Psalms 102 and verse 3, For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as in hearth. The same way smoke goes up, and you won't ever see it again, your short life is the same way. Psalms 39, 5, Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Do you think 120 years old is an old age? That age is nothing to God. To God, a day is as, as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Not even Methuselah, who lived to be a 969, had a long life in the eyes of God. Psalms 89, 47 through 48. Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. The devil isn't the only one who knows he has but a short time. In the time of Jacob's trouble, Satan will know his time is short. He will redeem the time, but he will do evil works. We need to redeem the time. Our time is short, and we need to produce good works with what time we have. Job 14, 1 says, Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Since our days are few and full of trouble, we need to stay right with God, and then He is more likely to answer our prayers when we come to Him with all our tribulations. Job knew a lot about our days being few and troublesome. Job 9, 25, Now my days are swifter than a post. They flee away. They see no good. And then Psalms seventy-eight thirty-nine, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. That's your life, see? We are but flesh. Peter says all flesh is as grass. The same way the wind blows and you never see it, see it again is the same way our life passes by and we never see it again. Psalms 90 and verse 9, for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. 
When we die, a person could literally sum up our short life in a tale. I could sit right now and start as far back as I can remember and tell you the major points of my life in under 30 minutes. You read biographies about people and all the exciting things from their life are explained in a really short book. And most of it really isn't even exciting. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Time is precious and we need to do something with it. So death is sure and it can come at any moment. And as a general rule, it will happen to every person. But there will come a time when there is no more death. Revelation 21, 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. How great it will be one day when we never have to go to a funeral again. You won't have to go to the graveyard anymore. There will be no hearses in eternity. There will never be police officers coming to a mother's door and informing her that her children have been killed. No more phone calls in the middle of the night. No more flat lines. No more electric chairs. One day, death will be no more. And there have been exceptions to the rule of Hebrews 9.27. There are some people who have not died. Or there have been people who have, who have died more than once. Or died and came back to life. Let's look at some of these exceptions. Jesus Christ died. He died for us, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. As the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3, he conquered death, hell, and the grave. Death couldn't hold him down. Now he is he that liveth and was dead, and behold, he is alive forevermore and has the keys of hell and of death. And since he conquered death, all those who get in the body of Christ by believing on his name will one day not be affected by death. All the saved people who died in Christ will raise up from the dead and get an incorruptible body. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, No death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And those who are alive and remain at the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture, will go up to meet the Lord in the air and never face death. As a type of the people who are alive at the rapture, you have Enoch, who was translated in Genesis and taken somewhere else, and he never sees death. In the Old Testament, there was a man named Elijah who was taken up in a whirlwind in a chariot of fire, and it is a good possibility he never saw death. And it is also a good possibility that he will come back as one of the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. He will finally die there and be beheaded in the street, and this would make him a type of the tribulation saint who doesn't die in the tribulation, but rather is raptured out in a post-tribulation rapture like in Matthew 24, 31, only to later die in the millennium because they don't have a glorified body. So they don't die in the trib, they get raptured out in a post-tribulation rapture, and then they die later. Similar to how Elijah doesn't die, gets raptured, and then dies later. And then you have Moses who, if he is one of the two witnesses, doesn't die once but dies twice. He died the first time when he was here, and he will die again when he is beheaded in Revelation chapter 11, if he's one of the two witnesses. So he would picture the tribulation saint who dies in the tribulation, gets resurrected, and then dies again in the millennium because he doesn't have a glorified body. So you have people who don't just die once, but die twice. You have people who escape death completely, but as a general rule, most people will die. The word death in Revelation 6-8 is capitalized, and I sometimes wonder if there is an actual being named death. Uh, the beggar Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom when he died. So maybe there are angels that carry all of us to heaven when we die. All the movies you see with the grim reaper waiting on someone to die could have a tad bit of truth to them. But if you don't want to face the second death, it's not 100% certain that you're going to escape the physical death. But you can escape the second death, which is being cast into the lake of fire. And if you want to escape that, you need to believe the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 
It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the Gospel is this, Jesus Christ died, he died for you, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. If you want to be saved, believe that Gospel. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to be saved, come to God as a guilty sinner that you are, knowing you can't save yourself, knowing you can't get out of hell without His righteousness getting applied to you. When you get saved, God takes away your unrighteousness and gives you Jesus Christ's sinless, spotless record that's righteous. And then after that, God sees you as righteous. He doesn't see your unrighteous soul anymore. So you need to get saved today before it's too late.